Good morning, everybody. It's Mark from MT Restorations again, and I have another little project. Um, got one of these switchers, 1955, you know, sorta, uh, up to 60, I believe, 50s, you know, mid to upper 50s. Uh, this one here is a, a Navy Yard, uh, New York, number 51. Picked this up uh, last week uh, from a store that I go to often. And up in uh, Fountain Hills, Arizona, and um, doesn't run. It uh, it's got some issues. It's a clean looking, uh, good shape. Most of these window mullions are usually broken on these. This one has a crack, but they're there. You can see this one has a an issue, but it's there. Um, so the body we're gonna you know probably leave as is the graphics are pretty good so we're gonna take it apart see inside what's going on with it and hopefully we can get it to run um, it does take electric from the track you know power does happen it does make a noise but that's about all so we'll see what we can find out here seeing it first with you folks I've not been inside this thing yet and so let's see what we find um, nothing out of the ordinary so far so we're gonna take these brush plate we're gonna lift this off see if we can get down to the armature see what's going on in there in case you're wondering why I have two different kind of gloves on, or gloves, period. I usually don't wear gloves, but some of these tend to get pretty greasy and messy, and it's difficult to keep cleaning my hands every few minutes. But, uh, so here's the springs. Try to keep track of these parts the best we can. take this screw out because I'm sure it'll fall out later on anyway brush plate seems to be intact the armature oh it also pulled the bushing out which is fine oh it's dry very dry down in there which is okay I mean it's not the end of the world but obviously with no grease it has some issue I think the uh, E unit will need a little bit of attention we'll give that some attention as well so, with all that said, <clears throat> we're going to clean this out and put some grease in it. We'll clean the armature up and we'll go from there. So, let's uh, focus on the armature for a minute. Let's see how much we can get off here with my pencil eraser. I tend to use these off. And you can see it gets it pretty clean. We'll give it a couple wipes first with our, use some alcohol on a Q-tip, cotton bud if you're down under. That's the folks call them over there, I believe. But uh, you can see it gets, gets a lot of the grease and dirt off right off the bat with a little bit of alcohol. You can use whatever thing you want like to use, but the alcohol is best. It, Evaporates pretty quick, so we don't have to worry about it lingering, lingering on too long. Wipe off some of the excess with a, my grease rag, but <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, then the rest of that, we'll see if we can get that off with an eraser a little bit easier. I, I use something soft like that because I don't really want to use steel wool for the most part, or my Dremel tool all the time. We don't want to scar up the commutator plates here. Get that pretty clean. Then I use, you can use a toothpick. You can use a dull X-Acto knife blade, but I try to dig out the excess that's in here. It fills up with some of the dirt from the brushes 
and you can smell that when it's going around that smell that these give off old trains give off when they're running they people call it the ozone smell um, it uh, is from that they say they say that's from the dirt and dust inside these little little crevices here around the commutator so we'll clean that off get the bushing off of there that goes down it sits uh, the bushing sits down in there actually and uh, some of them are hard to get out this one came right out with it which was fine uh, clean this up a little bit right here a little bit of rust on there you can see but it doesn't hurt anything riding inside the magnet We'll clean this off a little bit. See what uh, we put this back together with some grease down in there and see if how that reacts. So we want to make sure we don't have any foreign clumps of anything much down in there. It doesn't look like it's pretty dry, just bone dry. The gear is has a little wear on it. You can see it's not as smooth. The teeth on it are not not exactly like it was when it was built, but I think they're going to be pretty good to run this baby. So with all that, oh, the bearing came out. Okay, we have a bearing. The bearing usually goes up inside here. You see that little bearing up there? This little guy goes up inside where the armature fits up inside. So we'll have to make sure we don't lose that again. But uh, there's a ball bearing. You can still get those online. I'll put a little bit of oil in there. Let's see, get a little bit of oil in there. Just a drop will maybe keep it from sliding out so easy little surface tension on it we'll keep it in there hopefully um, so we're gonna take some of this off of here and get that down in here and clean these brush holders out get some of that blackness out of there get some of all this off of here best we can Let's just get some dirt and dust in there. We'll see how we get together with the rest of this. I'm going to put some grease down inside. Got my trusty Lionel lube. Just put a little, little bit down in there about the size of a pea. A green pea. And... Just get it around the gear a little bit. You can move the gear around from the wheels. Just push it along. You'll see the grease come back up to the surface. Yeah, get a little bit more. It's not going to hurt. Give it another little shot down in here. There we go. We want the uh, we want the worm gear to have a lot of grease on it. There we go. I'm gonna put this back on. Put that down in here. sure it's seated correctly tap a little bit make sure it's down in there square seems to be put a little grease around it I put a little grease on here that back down in here 
you'll know it's seated correctly when you turn it there and then the wheels want to turn if you get the wheels going that means that it'll start to move there we go yeah, you can see it's slow motion but the gears the the wheels are turning, so the gear is where it needs to be. Uh, see what condition the brushes are in. The, a lot of life left on the brush, obviously. They, they, they wear pretty well. They last a long time. Oop. It just fits back in there on top of the spring. Okay. So let's see what we can do about getting this back together without losing everything. Get this in here, put that in there. I have to keep track of our ball bearing. What I usually try to do is set this up where I could uh, get this back on without losing the brushes and or the ball bearing and also get the armature back into the hole where it belongs but all that said we're going to go for it here there i think we're about there okay so remember we have that strap to put on our grounding strap Just tighten this up a little bit. Just snug it for the moment till we get the other screw started. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse my my sniffles. My allergies are kicking in lately. My nose runs better than my trains. I get a frog in my throat every morning. Okay, you just want to snug these up. I mean, there's, 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 don't need to put that on with a torque wrench. Then, we'll put a little bit of oil down here, a drop or so, for that ball bearing. So, let's see here. We're going to try this. I'm just going to set it down on the track right next to me here and see if we get anything from it and uh, what I'm going to do is make sure we got a little bit of power to the track yeah we can put that on here and put this on the track I'll see if I can pick that video up on my other camera here and uh, we'll see what happens so we got the camera rolling over here on the uh, let's see what we get oh yeah very nice I think that's a winner. Before it uh, made some noise, but that was it. And it wouldn't move at all. So, that didn't take too long, did it? About, oh, seven, eight, nine, ten minutes. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Since I have the cover off, and I'm just going to put a little oil on the lever. You can see it picks up a little rust here and there. It never hurts to have this one working a little. 
a little bit better than it was. I've got some oil down in there. Just always remember, put a little oil down in there every once in a while. You can almost reach it if you have one of these. You can reach it through the window without taking the cover off most of the time. And since we have, you know, the oil out, you want to just put some on the axles where it needs it in here. Keep those turning. Keep the roller on the ends. Keep that spinning. We want to make sure we got just a little oil in there. A little oil here. A little oil in there. And we want to put a little grease on there. So, excuse my arm. We get the little lube down in here. Get some on this this gear over here, which will drive the wheels. We want to get some stuff on here. So, try not to get too any, too much on the wheel itself. It'll just grease up and dirty up your track. So, and just move some of this grease around. Put some back down in here, so on and so forth. Get that down in there. There we go. I'm just going to set it back on the track for a minute. And I am going to just work it back and forth. We're going to send it around the track a little bit. There she goes. So the E-unit cycles coming around, there we go. So the grease has been worked around, you can see it's cleaned up, it's gone spread around the gears. So with that said, uh, let's put it back together. So the notch for the E-unit arms right there, we're going to make sure we get it through there feed these down on here get it inside there got it seated got it seated very good like I said I'm actually surprised I'll go to shape this one's actually in um, I'm happy about that I have another one let me show you I have another one <laughs> actually got them both the same place same day uh, this one doesn't really, let's see. Well, let's put it on the track and see. I don't remember what it does. <clears throat> yeah, you can see uh, it just uh, makes the noise. Even moving the lever on the E unit doesn't help much. So this one here, Needs, a, needs some work as well. So what we're going to do, put the screws back in. In here. Oop. Not any problem with gloves. But it does save my fingers. I wash my hands so many times a day from, from having dirty, greasy hands. You know, in the winter time, it's awful dry. My hands, you know, the fingers start cracking, and then you get more grease in there, and it, it's not a good thing. You can see there's a little crack. Somebody tighten this a little bit too tight. All you want to do is just take it till it's snug. That's all. The body's not going to fly off of the, off of the frame. So, again, just we're going to clean it up a little bit. I'll take my, uh, I'll take the shell off another day. And I'll just put some 409, a little bit of water, and we'll clean all that off and make it look pretty. So there's one. So since that one was such a success, what do you say we tried this other one? Okay, so same thing. We're going to take screws out here real quick and see what we can find inside here. Again, this, this body's not too bad either. It's a nice surprise. You're always going to get sometimes these little hairline cracks around the screws from uh, too much too much on and off. Um, the window, well, mullion's actually good on this one. 
Um, looks like something was going on around the window. Not really sure what happened here. Almost looks like there was some, I don't know, body work done or something. It's just, just kind of strange looking around there, like it was melted or something was happening. But uh, all in all, it's in pretty good shape. So I'm going to put that over here. We have the same thing. Looks the same inside. So we're going to take this off and see what's cooking down in here. Oh boy, somebody really tightened that one up. Or, or the factory did. I don't know if this was ever opened before or not. We'll find out. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, as we get ready for Christmas, I am been I've been working up uh, uh, up at the train store in Fountain Hills, helping them folks out up there. They get busy this time of year, and for something to do, I give them a few days a week up there, and works out good for everybody. Wow, that was really jammed up in there. I'm trying to think here. Let me get my little dental tool in here and see. It looks like the ball bearing's still in there, but this is really chewed up. Full of, it was maybe that's why it wasn't even moving. It was getting power. Let me get a clean Q tip here. Let me let me see what's going on there. It's awful grimy. It even looks like it has a little bit of a wear groove around there for some reason. And the armatures, commutator plates are really dirty on this one too. Which don't take long. It doesn't take long for these to get dirty like that from the brushes. But uh, they'll, they, they, they wear pretty well too. I mean, that's like a copper penny. It takes a long time to burn grooves through here with it. As long as your brushes are in pretty good shape. Just take a little bit of Q-tip around these. Get some of the excess grease and dirt off of it. These do get a little greasy from the oil that comes down through here from the top. It gets to, to be like a tarry, like tar build up around here. Get that up in here a little bit break this down get it up in here pull a little more of that dirty fuzz off here get up inside the brush holders try to get that black stuff out of there too the better the contact the cleaner and the better the contact the better it's going to run and get get the power it needs the voltage and um, get a little bit down in here where the ball bearing is help clean out whatever's in there it's pretty nasty but we'll see if we can get that to help. So down here, let's see what we got down in there. Try to use the cleaner side and maybe we can, yeah, we'll get that down in there and get some of that old stuff out of there. Looking, my head in the way. <laughs> it's my head. I don't know if my head's in the way, um, but I'm trying to look down in here and see what we see. The gear looks in really good shape. It looks in better shape than the other. We just want to make sure that the the grooves are kind of clean. We don't want any uh, build up inside those teeth or little metal shavings and so on and so forth. You don't have to take this bushing out. They're seated in there pretty well. So I think, let me get another Q-tip here. We're going to see if we can gather any more down in there and see what we have. Just spin that around a little bit, get some of that. It did have a little grease in there where the other one was bone dry. This one does have some, some stuff down in there. Let's see if we can get all that 
kind of out of there and so on and put some fresh stuff in there. We're going to clean this off a little bit. If you see any debris in here, I, a good little thing to do is I have a little wire brush. Just kind of clean the teeth out. Make sure there's no buildup of old grease in here and metal shavings or anything. We want this to we want these teeth to mesh with those teeth really nice. So I'm going to clean off the commutator with my trusty little pencil. And, uh, I'm starting to lose my table here. So we're going to get some of that cleaner again using my pencil eraser. Again, you can use what you like. This seems to be work pretty good for me and it's not evasive <laughs> to the material here it's now from a coin collectors once told me that you can't use pencil erasers for cleaning pennies and nickels and all that stuff because it does affect the graphics and the writing and the print and all that stuff but there's none of that on here, so I don't have to worry about that too much. It seems to do good for me. Oh, see, here's some, a, lot of, a lot of junk coming out of this one. You don't want to press too hard. You don't want to dig in there. Just, just enough to fluff out what might be down in there. I've seen some of these just full all the way up to the top. But for the most part... That's pretty good shape. Okay, we're going to give it the same treatment. We're going to get some grease, some new grease. It's really not new. This grease is probably older than I am, but it's still working. Still good stuff. Can't go wrong using the Lionel grease. I'll just fill that pocket up a little bit. Put a little bit behind here. Just move it back and forth. Let that drive gear collect some of that lube. Yeah, get it down in there. And then we're going to put this back in there with the excess grease on it. Again, we're going to get it down to where it belongs. There, see? There we go. So, with that... Okay, so where's the brushes? They're rolling away here on me. So we're gonna take these, we're gonna make sure we got no, get some of that excess grime off of those. Just, you can see they do get dirty on the sides, on the bottom. They'll get dirty again real quick, but I probably open these up and clean all this stuff out like this probably once every I don't know 100 hours that this runs um, or maybe you know 75 it depends on the, how, how long you run them but um, if you run it a couple hours a day you know that's probably more than any of these were run I don't know but 80 to 100 hours, it's kind of like time to open it up, clean these. Unless it starts doing something a little weird sooner than that. But uh, like I said, usually no one runs them 24-7. If you do, that's great. Um, you must be a train museum or something like that to run them that much, but... Um, just keep your eye on their performance. If you see it's starting to get sluggish or slow down or whatever, check the brushes. So we're going to line this up again the best we can without losing a brush. We're going to want to get the armature inside that armature hole, which I think we're on. There we go. There we go. So the brushes are seated. I can see the threads. So we're going to put this one in, and we're going to snug it down a little bit. 
Yeah, make sure it all seats into place. This one here's got the little ground wire on it. So we'll just make sure we get that down in there, line that up. Probably it's hard to see through my fingers, but I'm tightening that down a little bit. Hold your plate in, just snug it. Again, you don't have to crank these down to where you can't get it off again. Put a little oil in there uh, at the bearing. And get some of that excess off. But that's all you need there. The E unit looks pretty good. I, I, I don't see the drum. You can see the drum in there. The drum unit actually is right behind here, the plunger. It's uh, a little dirty. Um, it doesn't hurt to clean that out every once in a while as well. And uh, you can do that with a Q-tip as well. Just, just run it up inside here. You can see the green, I think you can see it. It's a green drum. Um, it's got some black on it from 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 spinning from the wear but we're gonna try it <clears throat> excuse me we're gonna try this one real quick and see if that helped any because uh, you remember it just wouldn't do anything so we're gonna see what it does now I'll put it back on the track for a second so we're rolling here I believe yeah let me check the E unit Well, we got the same result, so I think I see what it is. So we're going to move it back to the table and focus in on that on that E unit and take a look and see what's going on there. So that one has a little bit more to it. So let's see what we got. So with the noise it's making, it's 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 it seems like it's not cycling, and when I mean cycling, it should this should lift. The plunger should lift, which catches a tooth on the drum unit. It'll catch that tooth, and when this cycles up, it pulls that tooth, and it spins the drum unit. i show you one of these. Uh, I got a few. But this is a unit, this is a drum unit that's inside here. Um, you can see the teeth that are on those. That metal plunger will grab that tooth and cycle. It'll just keep doing that. And as it does that, you can see these copper bands come around and they hit another copper band that's in there. They're called fingers. They're little copper fingers that will slide over these bands and alternate. They'll go from forward to reverse and forward to reverse and as many times you turn the power on and power off and power on, it'll spin this a tooth. And that's what makes the device go forwards and backwards. So I think what's happening is this is not really cycling very well. Uh, every time you apply power, the coil here creates a field and pulls that plunger up. So then gravity um, will drop it when you when power is off that will fall that plunger falls it grabs a tooth then when you put power to it it pulls it back up and spins the drum so that's kind of how they do it. it's it's a uh, ingenious what Lionel came up with long ago but um, changing that out fixing these e units is a video I've done a while back you can refer to that uh, if you need some help fixing E units, um, it'll, it, it kind of does a step by step opening these up, changing the parts out. So, with that said, I'm going to put a little bit of WD up inside here, just to just a splash, just to see if it's if the plunger's hanging up, not not moving, not spinning. The drum, the drum looks like it. Uh, 
it does it does turn it does turn the drum so let me try it on the track again real quick and just see <clears throat> you can you can also shake it up and down a lot of times you'll hear that the clicking is the plunger moving around so we want that to happen I'm going to set it back again on the track real quick. So that was it. Um, that was it. So as you could see, a uh, couple different things could be wrong with these. It's hard to tell until you get into them. But it's usually something that's fixable. So what we're going to do, we're going to finish this one out here by lubing up the axles with a little bit of grease and oil. Oil up the wheels. This is missing a front truck. I think I have one. I'll have to grab it, find it, and put it on. Put a little grease down in here, like we did before. And get my little trusty tool, and just get some of that grease and move it around a little bit. Get it behind, get it, get the gears. You don't want it flying off. You don't want to put too much, but I got a little bit much on here. Let me put some of this over here. Get the gears well lubed up. Get some down in here. And like I said, make sure the rollers are rolling. Just a little bit of oil on the pins. You want them to spin. Um, you don't want to end up with a flat spot if they don't spin and just drag they'll get a flat spot on them but uh, and if they need cleaned sometimes you'll see there's pitting on here from sparks you can use a dremel tool and just have that spin around and clean them off um, you can do that do the dremel clean the wheels anything to improve the contact to the track is best You'll see the black stuff get on the wheels. You can clean them. We'll see how dirty they are. I'll show you. Um, it just these aren't bad. These are pretty clean. Look at that. These are a little dirtier. See the dirt. So dirt and grease from the track will get on the wheels. And what happens is, you know, it, it uses the wheels to ground for grounding. So electrically. The circuit won't be complete unless it has a good ground. So that'll also help the performance. So clean these all the way around. Well, I'm just doing a I'm doing a quickie here to show you, but just clean those all the way around the wheels. Get all the grime off of that. Keep your tracks clean. And we should be pretty good shape. So I'm gonna put this one back on and get my camera out again. Get my camera over here. We're going to take another video of this running this time. We're going to send it around the track a little bit. There she goes. So the E unit cycles coming around. There we go. So that's two. That's two of them that we have running, which is a good thing. So like I said, uh, I like these little guys. They they they're they're not a fast mover. They're not going to win a race. They're they're geared to where they have pulling power. The old yard switchers. That's all they did. They were a small little engine that moved big cars and engines and stuff around the yard on the track. So they were powerful. And these are also made that way. And I think, you know, they're geared, they have small wheels, but they're geared to have more pulling power than they do for speed. They're not going to fly off the track, typically, because they don't really move that fast. But So, again, um, worked out pretty well. Uh, I think it was a good video. If you have any of these, um, they're not that hard to work on, as you can see. And uh, usually the problems are either the uh, dirty armature contacts or the E-unit's not cycling. You just want to make sure you have everything operational, uh, 
lubricated, moving, and clean. So I'm going to put this one back together real quick. Again, let's see, here's my screw. There, there's one, and the other one's still stuck in here. So we'll pop that out. And what we're going to do is, where you go? Here we are. Okay, so what we're going to do is pop this back on again. Make sure the arm goes through the hole, which it does. There, drop that down. Whoop. I see it, that don't help either you can see some of that this is kind of loose because it was bent somebody bent that to make it stay in one place so that's another fix that yeah we'll have to uh, in the video like I said on, on uh, the units I fixed um, I don't remember if I even took the levers off and replaced those but to do that this top has to come off from the bottom part of the e unit that way you can get inside this frame, you pull the coil off and you can um, press a rivet with a new handle or straighten this one out. But somebody bent it uh, right now. So we're gonna go with, we're gonna live with it for the moment. And uh, there we go, we're gonna get that in there and this back down. Let's see, they got this railing bent a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna put this in back together. It's got regular screwdriver end on it. Okay, so we're gonna use, eh, where's my other little screwdriver? Where'd that go? There we go, there. Okay, so we got one going in, again, we don't need a lot of torque on that. We don't want to crack the plastic any more than it already has been. There we go. Okay, so throw this debris away, get the table ready for another project. But so two of these. I got to get a truck for the front, which I believe I have somewhere. And um, they both working. Good looking little units. Nice, powerful thing. And um, there we go. So thanks everybody for watching. Hope that helped. And if you have any of these uh, in, in the video, you'll see what you can do to keep them in tip top shape. Running good. For being 65 or 66 years old, they're not doing too bad. So until next time, uh, this is Mark from MT Restorations. Um, please subscribe, send questions, uh, comments. I appreciate everything that everybody sends me. Um, it's been uh, great answering people, and I I get some good comments back from folks. Um, that I, some of my videos are longer, but I try to explain piece by piece, word by word, and, and step by step on what to do. So uh, keep the comments coming, good or bad, you know, criticism or not, whatever it is that helps me understand what we're doing here is uh, what I'm looking for. So please subscribe. And until next time, um, this is Mark from NT Restorations. You can contact me through uh, my um, email. It's mt dot train restorations at gmail.com so please send me your emails or pictures or whatever comments you may have or suggestions for a video that you need me to do for whatever reason and I'll try to do that so if I don't see you again before the holiday have a great Christmas and New Year everybody stay safe and uh, bye for now that's it